So in my room, I've got this big open blank space of wall, and I think I want to put something in there, so that's what we're going to do today. Alright, so this is what I'm going to put up there, and I'm going to give it a layer of this glow-in-the-dark paint. You'll see why eventually. after about four hours, which is pretty much when I have to leave for work. So if you've ever wondered how glow-in-the-dark stuff works, it's just got this property called luminescence, which is basically generating light from anything other than heat. So if it's generated by heat, like heating up metal or an incandescent light globe where it heats the filament, that's called incandescence, whereas luminescence is anything else. One example of this is chemiluminescence, which you'll be able to see in things like glow stick, where we mix the chemicals, you can see there's a faint blue-purple glow coming from this glow stick, which is an example of chemiluminescence, where the chemical reaction is generating light. Next up, we have electroluminescence, where we use electricity to generate light. So that's anything like a torch or an LED light globe, or things like a laser, where we put energy and electricity in, and light comes out. So basically using the batteries to provide electricity to the laser diode, generating light. Finally, getting closer to the glow and dark stuff, we have photoluminescence, which is using light to supply the energy to create light. So one example of this is fluorescence, which you can see an example here where I'm shining my laser on my headphone cable. Uh, you can see the laser light is blue, but where it hits the headphone cable, the light becomes green. What's happening here is the light received by the material, being the rubber, excites the electrons up to a certain level. The electrons then relax, and as they relax, they release light. So fluorescence is when the light is immediately released, so you can see the immediate green glow, but as I move the laser away, it stops. Whereas phosphorescence is the one we're going to look at with glow-in-the-dark stuff, where it absorbs all the energy, but then it slowly relaxes over time, and it releases energy over a longer period, which is how we get glow-in-the-dark. So here we go. Once we uh, finish off this painting, I'll show you some cool stuff we can do with it. Hmm. Still a little bit wet and I can see it's a bit patchy around the sides. But just been for a run and I've got about an hour to work, so one more layer before I go to work. So there we go, pretty happy with that for now. Um, I'm going to get ready for work, so I'm going to check back on this in four hours time. Huh. Okay, so I was lazy last night and just tried to tape on the string, which obviously didn't work. So, now to find a better way to fix it. There you go, now leave that to dry. Oh, that looks good. Okay, I think that looks good. Now, before I show you guys how it works, there's still a few days left of my first ever giveaway. So if you click on the link, I think it'll be up in this corner. Um, that'll take you to the video, and you can watch the video, follow the link in the description, for your chance to win. But now, let's see how this works. Look at that. Have a look at it. What? Why 
have you done that? How did you, what did you paint on there? Glow in the dark paint. Why? Because it's cool. Look what you can do. Hey, let's, let's turn, hold that for a second. Cool.